Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled. I am Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to talk about The Loudest Voice, Season 1, Episode 1. Well, it's just Episode 1, it's a limited series, but <laughs> same difference. Uh, so this is, Loudest Voice has come from Showtime. This is the Roger Ailes uh, series uh, about his, his time um, at Fox News. And this was actually a pilot that was uh, picked by our patrons. Uh, everyone's on patreon.com slash TV. Uh, we put up a post saying what pilots you want us to do for the next month, assuming we're not doing them already. And this one was suggested. So we are here to check this out, thanks to our patrons. Uh, so it's an episode one. So, I mean, we'll start off spoiler free, although given that it's such a true story kind of show... It's- yeah, it's, it's real events. You know how this ends. There's, there's not a whole lot of things in this episode that I think you can spoil outside of maybe how they handle one or two scenes. Um, sure. But just, you know, we'll, we'll keep it relatively uh, free of spoilers. Uh, I, I don't know if there's going to be much of a spoiler spoiler section at the end, to be honest, because I don't know how much there'll be left to talk about. But no. um, So this is Russell Crowe in this. He's playing Roger Ailes. Yes, in a one, one of those uh, transformative roles. It reminded me, I've not seen Vice, but it reminded me a lot of Christian Bale in that, just from the trailers. Sure, just in the visual transformation. Yeah, the visual, just how different he looks. Yeah, you can go like a Gary Oldman in Darkest Hour, maybe. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, it reminded me of those, it's very similar. I mean, you can still tell it's him, you can he- see his, hear his voice and you can see his eyes and whatnot, but... But it's not immediately recognisable just at a glance. No, no. Um, and it's not Russell Crowe looks like this now, because it's, it's, you know, I saw him in things like well, last year, and he's still a little Russell Crowe. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. He, you know, he, he didn't pull like... Because like, I'm almost surprised Christian Bale just didn't just put on the weight for Vice, because he's, he's known for doing that. <laughs> that kind of yeah. thing. Maybe he didn't have the time. Yeah, not have the time for that. Uh, so, yeah, episode one's called 1995, uh, which is where we start a story. There, There is a small little, like, prologue, like, 2017, you know... You know, at his death <laughs> again. Yeah. Real true story. It's not a spoiler. Um, but we go back to 1995, and it's kind of the build up to the launch of Fox News, and we find out that Roger Ailes. And, I, and for the record, I know knew next. I, I knew about the controversy at his death. I, I I never heard of him before then. I didn't know. Oh, do you know, okay. I know I've, who, I've read a few things, uh, a book here or there. Yeah, I didn't know who who he was before that. I, I didn't know about what he was doing in the 90s or. However, I knew he was on at Fox News at some point, and clearly the whole time up until his death, more or less. Oh yeah, I know. I was very aware that he was the man behind making yeah. Fox News what we think of as Fox News. Oh, we get into that in this episode. This was it was educational in that sense. How, how accurate every single scene is is you know up for debate. But uh, yeah. we find out he was getting ousted at another network, another news network, and, uh, NBC, I believe. Uh, was it NBC? And they want uh, a non-commit. Uh, thing in his contract, uh, a non-compete, sorry, uh, so that he can't just go work at another news show. Um, and he wants wiggle room, so he convinces them to change his contract so that it's like any existing news network, being that he knows that Fox are about to launch a news network, and if he's got that lined up, he can still go do that because it's not existing yet. Um, genius, pretty genius. From from, from a like a a technical law standpoint. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing about him. Like, there is one major scene, like two thirds or so into it, that hints at his his sexual abuse and assault kind of, like, oh yeah, yeah, you know where that's going, right? There's what there's a big scene about two thirds into the episode that hinted that. For the most part, though, it deals more with just how he is in a professional level and how he interacts with people. He's, and he's um he's one of those people where obviously he's kind of a terrible person. Oh, he's, he's, a, um, he's a complete piece of shit. But there is no denying he was fantastic at his job. He you know, he he gets angry, he shouts at them, he, he's given this job of like setting this news network up. He claims he can do it in six months, which is insane. Uh, you know, yeah. as opposed to like a year or so. Because they, they think a year is a tight thing, you know, and we've got an actor playing Rupert Murdoch. Seth MacFarlane's in a random role. You have this weird hang up with Seth MacFarlane. I'm like, I don't have a problem with him just popping up in roles. He just he showed up and I'm like, why is Seth MacFarlane in this? He's not even doing like a Seth MacFarlane thing. He's fine. I know, but he's just he's so busy. He's like running and starring on another show on like on Fox. Like, go do that, Seth. <laughs> Seth MacFarlane, I was like, cause, cause it was that thing where like you didn't get a clear look at him quite right away. He was just kind of in, in a group scene. And then I was yeah. like, was that Seth MacFarlane? And then I was like, is that Seth MacFarlane? Um and you know, I mean, there's little lines from Ailes like throughout the episode that sort of hint at the way he treats women, but it's it's just very just these small little snipey things. 
and then eventually you know we have the one big scene later on where he's interviewing a potential uh you know anchor and that that's that's where it gets creepy but um a lot of it is is kind of like a it's a very simple story this episode of just the putting together what the network is and all the like recruiting all the people he wants to recruit and how he treats people at his job and kind of clashing with this guy who works with murdoch yeah um and i think because it is on this countdown to launch yeah, it has a great pace to it it does it feels very well paced um and i think russell crowe's actually pretty good in the role i think he's done a pretty decent performance and it, again i've never really seen this the real guy speak so i don't know how accurate his demeanor is or anything but at least as a performance he's done a pretty good job for me yeah no i agree um i don't think it, the accuracy isn't what's important here not really i mean you'll, you'll probably find some people who will be upset that oh it's not accurate enough i don't know i don't know if it is but there will be so be someone who complains that it's not it doesn't really matter does it as long as it's getting across the the intention and you know the the, the emotion and stuff like that that's that's all that you can really ask for yeah the the, the big scene um which you kind of referred to earlier as the, the creating fox news as we know it um where they're in the boardroom and they're talking about um you know what, what the target audience is and you know roger pipes up and he's like so you know who who are we targeting with this network and the whoever's speaking they're like well, they're like well everyone it's the news yes yeah, everyone he's like that's a mistake and, you know, and rupert kind of like perks up and he's like yeah go, go on there roger what, what's in your mind he's like well and he basically he kind of paints it as well like all, all the news has a liberal leaning so we should do fair and balanced and you know conservative news for for you know traditional america and he's and you know, watching this, you kind of feel a little bit sick. Like, this is why we have Fox News now, is because this asshole sat there. And... But, but at the same time, <laughs> you have to go from a... Because he's not even looking at this as he cares about, like, as a conservative... Like, he's not, like, pu- wanting to push propaganda. He's just like, this'll work. This'll be successful. It'll make money. Well, well I mean, I'll critique the show of that. I, I will criti- critique that to high heavens, because... That's that's the problem with corporate America. <laughs> oh, oh, it's a terrible problem. It's, it's atrocious. We won't, we, saying... won't, we won't care what values we promote. We will just do it because that's the one that's going to make us money. Oh, oh absolutely. <laughs> that's a problem. Well, as, as, a, as a businessman, he's a genius. <laughs> well, that's the problem. No, no. Stop calling no. businessmen who do this geniuses. They're awful people. End they of are. discussion. They can, they can be both. No, they can't. The problem is, is that we keep yeah. no, no. We keep saying that they're good businessmen because they make this choice. No, 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 no. How about we start treating bad moral choices equally to the bad money good. choices? Good business people does not mean good person. And I'm saying we hold them accountable and we make it part of the 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 the. the, 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 the I, no, I think no, I think you, you're right. You can hold them accountable and still acknowledge that what they did good. was. The criteria the right for them. No, part of the criteria for being a good business person should also be just being a good person. There should be a responsibility there. So I, I'm, I am going to, and I get what you're saying. They're good at conniving the system. They're good at, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're shrewd. Doing what they're trying to do. Right. Yeah. But I, I, I am going to make a stand right here and now, everyone, that we cannot no longer call someone a good business person if they're a bad person, because it, they should be held accountable in the same same reins. The problem is, is that that's what they say, well, I don't really care if I'm a good person, I'm good at what I do. No, we have to take that safety blanket away from them. I've had enough of this. This conservative <laughs> bullshit. No, we're not doing it. <laughs> well, I've not agreed to that. And fuck Trump while I'm at it, since I'm on this... <laughs> no, I'll, I'll agree with that. <laughs> It's almost like I remember um, back in like the early two thousands. Uh, Robert Carlyle was in a in a mini series for Channel Four in the UK called Hitler: The Rise of Evil, and this is kind of what this felt like to me. It was like let's see how this awful person came into power. You know, it kind of is. It's like sure, this is the story of Fox News. This is the story of Roger Rail on the surface. Yes, but ultimately, is this is it's kind of go, hey hey. This is why you got Trump. This is a warning. This is a warning in why this happened. Bit, bit late for a warning, but yeah. Well, not it's a warning. A... It's a warning not to happen again. That's the point. That's the sure, that's yeah. the point of a warning. Um, like the you know, yeah, those who do not do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. It's quite simple. And yeah, you know that this is this is kind of what, what we're doing here. And, um, and all, obviously, a lot of this is about the character himself and about what, what he does o- over his years, but. It, you can't help but feel watching this that he also contributed to this and as a result 
He's awful in so many ways. Um, oh yeah, uh, he's a, he's a despicable human being. Um, and there's several points, you know, because we see him with his with his, his girlfriend, um, who who he's kind of with, and he tries to convince her to leave her job at NBC to come and work at Fox News, and then she eventually gets fired, and he does hire her. And almost immediately, he doesn't want to talk to her anymore. He's, you know, he's like, "Don't let her in my office." Mission, mission accomplished. Yeah. yeah, mission accomplished. And he eventually says to her, he comes home one day, he goes, "You know what? This isn't going to work. You're either going to have to pick me or the job because you can't be both to me." Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, and he, he says a lot of things. You know, when, when they're recruiting people, and he's he's, he's seeing like uh, tapes of people. You know, he's like, "Oh, like this foreign person." Like, you know, he he, he says something really vile about this uh, Asian lady who's in. Uh, uh, it says something about it. It 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 takes like Taj Mahal and like puts a vagina reference into it. Um, yeah. And it's this really awful thing. And then later on, like he's like, oh, let, let me see some of the tapes you didn't want me to see. And he's like, oh yeah, this guy who's just like a, a heckler essentially. That's this showman who does this radio show somewhere in some state. I want Correct him. If I'm wrong, this was Sean Hannity. Uh, I, I don't this remember. What what that, you're referring I don't remember if they said the name. They because I remember Sean Hannity was in there. Mm. And I think it was this guy that, that that was there, if I'm remembering right. Um, because this is the one where he mutes it, isn't it? Yeah, he mutes it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's like, no, this is perfect. Uh, this is perfect. Yeah. And they do a test run, and he's 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 terrible on camera. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, and and they're like, no, well, he, he couldn't respond to the the the, the guests. It's like you know, they they fought back and he didn't know what to do. It's like, well, just get a guest who won't fight back then. Yeah, he's like, well, you can't you know, be that picky with who we have on the shows. He's like, watch me. <laughs> and i'm like yep yeah, that sums up the attitude <laughs> yeah that su- sums it up um it's a weird one to review because i like it's i think it was a good performance there i think it's got a good pacing um and it seems to be doing what it's doing i mean arguably it's not really got a super amount to say beyond just look at how like messed up this is and like how yeah, he got to this point uh... It is very much just like, you know, here's your biopic picture, right? You know, yeah. film. Like, but we'll do it as a, I'm assuming, eight episode thing? I uh, actually know. Seven episodes. I, do seven, you know what? I, oh, God, I never would have guessed that. Do you know what I appreciate about it, though? I appreciate that it's like, because each episode, if you look ahead at the titles, they're all just based on a, a, a year, right? I like the idea that each episode is focused on something, because one of my problems with biopics is that it just kind of fires through all these events in a life, and it always feels like, you know, they're, they're just yeah, trying to check all the boxes. Like- some of the best ones are the ones that folks said. There was the, the Steve Jobs one uh, that was just three scenes. It was like, okay, three points in his life. Yeah. And that worked really well because it was like, okay, you know, it's three snapshots and, you know, how are we here? This is, all right, there's seven years and it's, you know, this one is, is the, the birth uh, of, of Fox News and presumably the last one will be the, probably the final year of his life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Presumably. The last one's 2016, so presumably it will go up to his death, um, yeah. you would think. Um, it... It's it's funny. I think this episode's actually relatively entertaining in a fascinating way. Like seeing how he like twists people to his will, right? Because he gets angry and loses his temper a lot, but at the same time, uh, he also like because he has this meeting at one point where he calls them all in at four a.m. and like you know shouts and streams about the performance and blah blah blah. But then kind of inspires him saying, "This is what we're trying to achieve, and isn't that worth you know being yelled at at four in the morning?" And he gets them all laughing, and it's like, you know, he clearly has charisma. Oh, absolutely. Um, it's yeah. it's the one positive quality he has is he knows how to kind of work people a little bit. Um, of it's, co- it's why he's successful, right? Or you know, because he knew yeah. what he was doing when it came. To, and and it's not just that he had the ideas to to know what he was doing. It was that he had the like the charisma to to convince people to go along with it. And of course, but he's using it all for for things that he shouldn't be uh, ultimately. So it's, it's classic supervillain. Yeah, you know. yeah, it's a classic supervillain. It, it is. It's like all that charisma and using it for nefarious purpose. Yeah, Ro- Roger Ailes, classic supervillain. <laughs> you heard it here first. Um, I don't think you heard it here first. No, I think probably that's not. a long-standing opinion. I don't know if anyone said that phrase though. Classic supervillain. I really hope they have, and I'm not the f- like. I hope I've just like read that somewhere, and that's why I came out. I don't think I did, but I wish that is plagiarism, just because <laughs> it's it's better if if that's just a, you know, a common consensus. Yeah, I like. I guess I don't know a ton about this story, like outside of how it ends. Um, so for me, it was mostly a learning experience and kind of seeing, um, you know, like I actually been kind of fascinated by like 
that just this idea of this is the start of the 24-hour cable news channel right like the idea yeah. that you know nbc's just launched theirs and like, cnn's just been going for a little bit and yeah and we're hearing in the background you know microsoft launching you know the the kind of okay we're going to push things to the internet and yeah kind of, kind of um, that angle and obviously we see where that is now with okay you know i i will get notifications with oh here's the headline you know if there's a big headline it'll it'll pop up on my phone without me even doing anything Every so often, I I've been getting headlines for like tennis results or something, and I'm like, I don't want this. Go away. Yeah, yeah. You only got the big one with the the 15 year old beating, uh, what's her name? I don't know. I don't, I Williams. Don't, I don't pay attention to, to sports. I have no idea what happened. I, I, mean, I don't pay attention to tennis that much either. But this is the first time hearing of those this. Notable ones. 15 well, year old beat someone. Okay. <laughs> it, yeah, like I think it was Serena Williams and you know, and the 15 year old. Uh, you know, first time Wimbledon Wimbledon beat her. So it was it was a big notable thing. Okay, I'll do your word for it. But I I, I kind of liked it from a snapshot of like just learning about stuff and again how how accurate some of these scenes are. Like it's I have no idea. Know, this is so I, I'm if familiar enough with the the topic. I've you know so I've read a few things, but I love that this exists for people who are never going to read those. Who sure. are never going to you know never going to go and sit and read you know, a four hundred page book about some guy who did Fox News right. But they might watch this because it's got some prestige. It's got some actors in it, and learn the story. And I think from you know, for like an educational purpose, I kind of love that it exists. No, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Um, it it's funny because I feel like maybe we would watch more of this if it wasn't so because we're so busy right now with our TV. There's no way we're doing the next six of these. It's it's just not happening. Um. Yeah. But it, it seems very watchable, though, even if it's not necessarily like knocking it out of the park. I, I, like I, I feel it feels very capable to me, but not like amazing. If that makes sense, yeah, it feels like it'll tell a very solid story. It'll be well shot, well directed, you know, well paced. It'll be entertaining enough, but the point of it will be just educational. But it'll be something that you know you could. In you know, in, in your star, okay, you got a, you know a college class, right? Go and watch this uh, as an you know like you know bit of prep work assuming they don't change something that makes it kind of useless is that like you know yeah where, where it changes it enough that it's like well we can't really use this to like show anything off now but um not, nothing and it felt overly like dramatized for the sake of dramatization like you uh, know... it didn't yet no uh, like i mean maybe some of the moments of him being creepy are played up for the camera you know for, for the sake of making it obvious for us um, um I mean, maybe, I but know, like at the same maybe. time, though, given his personality, I buy that he was Probably. this. This, you know, I know, I do as well. You know, um, and I, I presume several people have spoken out about how he's behaved with them. So yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I, I imagine that the the way he gets her to stand up and spin around and kind of like touches her face, I assume probably real. Yeah, it feels like it probably is real. I mean, the, I mean, the the quote unquote casting couch as a as a thing. I mean. Yeah. Not to, not to bring Harvey Weinstein into into this, but it, did, you, did you see that they, they took out a Toy Story two? Took took out a Toy Story two. So you know at the end of Toy Story two. You know how and all the Toy Story, the the like the the gag reel at the end mm -hmm. played throughout the credits. There's a scene in Toy Story two with a uh, the the villain whose name I'm forgetting, the little pickaxe dude. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The the, yeah, the one one who kidnaps kidnaps Woody. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's a scene of him doing like the, the casting couch thing with a couple of Barbie dolls. <laughs> I don't remember that. It's always been there, like, just as like a little, you know, here's a joke in the in the bloopers reel. Um, and but apparently in in the all the future pressings of the the Blu-rays and all the the downloads and streamings from like the last you know couple of weeks, it's been removed. So you're saying my Blu-ray could be worth some money because it's got the the dodgy it's scene. Got that, yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Do I own Toy Story One? I assume I do. I do. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know got, I do. I've got one, two, and three up there. Yeah. Um. That's very interesting. Yeah, I would never have even thought to bring it up, but you know, if we're if we're mentioning casting couch, I thought, well, it's relevant trivia this week. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, also, by the way, actually, I'll give you one thing, and this is intentionally disgusting. But every time he did it, it was really upsetting me. Is how much it focused on him when he was eating, like he was eating like spaghetti or something. It was giving the close up of the mouth and the sound effects, yeah, and I'm like, yeah. oh, come on, like. Yeah, no, I, I get that. We've got a we've got a guy like that at work at the minute. Uh, <laughs> you know, you, you, pe people have act, I, I've I've known people to actively cut their lunch short and go back up and work because they don't want to sit in the same room as him while he's eating. Yeah, 
Oh, I'm like, come on, stop it, stop it. Pull the camera yeah. back. T tone down the sound effects, please, please. Yeah, we we get it. He's a fat man. <laughs> come on, yeah. back up. Um, but yeah, I mean, oh, how, how, how do you feel about it overall? This episode, like, would you say? I know, you... I I like it. I enjoyed it. Um, I I would probably watch more if I wasn't busy. I mean, I don't know if I'd feel like I'd want to watch it all weekly. I'd probably, even though I typically don't binge things anymore, I'm not really a huge fan of binging. I would probably watch this over a couple of sittings because it feels like a film, right? It feels like it's a biopic. Mm. I feel like I should be watching this over like you know two two and a half hour chunks or whatever, I mean, give or take. Like you know, like if it feels like okay, it's a couple of films that I'd watch. It's like you know a series on on this this man's life or this period of his life. Um, maybe I will do that. You know, when it's finished, maybe I will. You know, one weekend watch it because mm. um, I did like it enough. Yeah, I should have mentioned Naomi Watts is in there, and we got Sienna Miller. There's, there's a good set of cast in here, um, outside of Russell Crowe and Seth MacFarlane and, and whatnot. Yeah. So, you know, there's, yeah. there's a good, quite a star-studied uh, thing going. Um, it's definitely something I'd, I'd recommend to people if they're interested in learning these sorts of things and seeing a, a reasonably entertaining version of those events. I would definitely recommend checking it out to people. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, like... <sighs> It's just a weird one to just... I don't know. I, I find this really hard to review, actually. Just because of what it is. No, no, it's hard to... That's why, that's why I'm resorting to, would I recommend it to people? Based on, you know, okay, it's a first episode, we're not doing it anymore. Would I recommend this to people to go and watch? And you know, and I, I think I would. Um, not to, like, everyone, of course, but to people who I thought might be into this sort of thing, and maybe they like, if they, they like biopics, they like a bit of history... Um, you know, if they're just a bit open to to this, and it's you know it's well shot enough, enough that I'd go, yeah, I can, I can safely recommend this is got enough quality that if you're interested in the core premise, you will likely enjoy it. Okay, there you go. Were you giving it a ten? Like a seven point five, I reckon. Yeah, I was thinking seven, seven point five, something in that range. Um, yeah. it's it's just got enough character to to not be too dry. Just enough. Yeah. Um. But at the same time, it's not knocking my my socks off. So. No, me either. Um. There you go. That is a uh, that is episode one of the loudest voice. Um. Per, per, you know, solid enough. Solid enough. If if you if you're interested in the subject, but uh, you can let us know what you thought of the first episode in the comments below. Um. I assume some Fox News fans are going to give me some hell. Um. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will be moderating heavily in case they go too far. Uh, but uh, you can like and subscribe. You can get us on Patreon, patreon.com slash TV. You can support us uh, that way. Um, you can check out all the other stuff we are reviewing every episode of. Uh, like Stranger Things is literally about to start season three. We're going to be doing that. And you can check out Big Little Lies from HBO and some other stuff too. So uh, check out all that. Uh, but that is us. So thank you once again for watching and listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching TV, guys. Have you got any vanilla?